MetPy is a very community-focused and community-driven project. This week, find out how to see our roadmap for where we're going, how to file issues, and even how to contribute code to MetPy. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. MetPy has always been a really community-driven and community-focused project. We now have two developers, but we still depend heavily on you to help guide the project, tell us what pieces are missing, or what is hard for you to do that is a common task that you want to be able to do in an easier way. You can even contribute code to MetPy. So this week, I wanted to show you the GitHub project page for MetPy, explain some of the workflows and how you can get involved, how to file issues, and how to comment. So first, if you go to the GitHub repository for MetPy, which is github.com slash unidata slash MetPy and is linked below in the video description, you'll get to this page. This is the project repository. A few things to note. This is the file structure for the MetPy repository. You can see that we're pushing 1,700 commits at the current time. Uh, we've had 15 releases and 22 code contributors. Up at the top in these tabs, there are issues, pull requests. These are the main two that we're going to focus on. First, let's talk about pull requests. A pull request is how you say, I have some code that I would like to contribute, be it a bug fix, or additional functionality. Right now you can see that we have 10 open pull requests uh, that are either awaiting review, still need some work, or a couple that are ready to merge. For example, if I click the static energy calculations pull request, which will likely be closed by the time this video airs, you see that this is a pull request that I've opened uh, to add calculations for dry and moist static energy. There's some commenting going back and forth here. We can see what's changed in this case that I've added a couple of test cases and some code that Ryan May has commented on. This is one of the really important things about the way that MetPy operates is we like all of the code to have tests that go with it. And this is something that we're more than happy to help you write. So here I know that the dry static energy function at 1000 meters and 25 degrees Celsius should produce a result of 309.4474 kilojoules per kilogram. And so this test case just makes sure that we don't break that in the future. So now if we go back we can see at the bottom that says all checks have passed. If we show checks, these are a number of automated services that run on every pull request to make sure that there are no uh, stylistic errors in the code, make sure that all the tests pass, uh, make sure that we have good test coverage, and so on. You'll get familiar with these if you submit a pull request, and that's a process that we're more than happy to help you with. One of the things I really wanted to focus on this week, though, was the issues. In the issue tracker, you can file a problem if you run into one. So for example, we had a community member file an issue where they were having a problem with significant tornado parameters, and they included what they were trying to do, the error. We were able to reproduce the error, and now it's something that we plan on having fixed in the next release. It's pretty easy to file a new issue. You just go over here, click the new issue button. You can put in the title of the issue, something descriptive of the problem that you're having, and then a comment, preferably with an example, a minimal example code. So don't put you know, multiple pages of a very long, complicated code in here, but a true minimum example. So you could have some text about your issue here. And then if you want to put code in, I can use three tick marks and then Python for the language. 
And then if I put some Python code in here and close those ticks, if I click the preview tab, now I can see that that's actually been formatted as code and syntax highlighted properly. It makes it nice and easy to read. So that is a great way to tell us that you're having an issue or that there's something missing that you would like to see in MetPy. And we can discuss it back and forth on here. You can also click on this good first issue button. And this lets you filter down to see just issues that we have tagged with the tag good first issue. If you're looking to get your feet wet and contributing to MetPy, these are all issues that we believe are relatively straightforward to address. And in fact, many of them, such as add a path effects capability to our add timestamp method, we have the solution in the issue. So there will still need to be a test for this, which is something, again, that we are happy to help you with. But we generally have some idea of how to solve the problem if it's tagged as a good first issue and we have that posted in there. The last thing that I want to show you is milestones. If we click on the milestones button, you can see that right now there are two milestones set, MetPy 0.7 by December 31st, and then a spring release uh, probably around April 1st. If we click on 0.7, you can see here all of the things that we are for sure trying to get in the next version of MetPy. This is sort of our hit list of things that we want to do immediately. It helps us prioritize the issues and features that we'd like to add. You can see it also shows pull requests in here. So if you're looking for something to work on, in addition to that good first issue tag, you can look at milestones and you can also look at milestones to get an idea of when something might be coming to the distributed version of MetPy. Back on the home page, you see that we have a link to the documentation at the top. And down here at the bottom in the README, there's a decent amount of information about some of the dependencies, how to contribute. We have a link to our contributing guide that talks about some of the, the ground rules, how to make a pull request, how code review works, and so on. and has links to some of the beginner issues. It also has links to Zen and the Art of Scientific Software Maintenance, which is a document that several scientific software developers have worked on and contributed to that has some best practices for things that we think you should do in scientific software. So for example, have descriptive function names, make no unnecessary assumptions, uh, that single letter variable names are not acceptable for anything other than a counter, and so on. These are ways to make good, extensible, readable code. I hope that you found this useful. I know it's a little bit off the track of the normal MetPy Monday topics, but I wanted to show you that it's really not that difficult to communicate with the developers, help us understand what your needs are, and even help contribute some of that code that you've written so that others can use it as well. If you liked this, don't forget to click subscribe down below to the Unidata channel so you get notifications when videos like this come out. You can follow MetPy on Twitter, at MetPy, and we post on the Unidata Facebook page. We'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.